Greetings one and all. The time has come for us to pay our respects to some more of our loyal patrons. Milan Gölner, Keeper of the Blade. Hayden Noel, who goes by Kiwi, the Keeper of the Book of Wild Beasts. Genevieve Olenik, Keeper Without Portfolio. This scenario is dedicated to you, with our deepest and most heartfelt thanks. And now, please enjoy The Afflicted. (laughs) Gotta be perfect. (laughs) Not quite right. Just a little bit more. Maybe it was taller. Need to make it a bit taller. Hey, mister, it's the middle of the night. You mind keeping it down? Some of us are trying to sleep. Hang on. Nearly finished. Do you know what time it is? Only they knew how important it was. (laughs) Gotta be perfect. Would you mind? What the hell is he doing? Just a little bit more up there. And uh, cover it with some of this. Yeah. Oh, that looks... No, it's not right. It's still not right. Keep it down up there. Wait a minute. I don't know what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gotta be perfect. Shut up, shut up. A little bit longer. Uh Yeah. That's, That's getting there. Hey, shut up. My kids are trying to sleep. God's sake. I'll just put some of this up there. A little bit taller. Hmm. Maybe. Yeah, that's looking pretty It's the middle of the night, goddammit. All right, all right. I'll, I'll keep it down. Hmm. Nosy good for nothings. Hmm. Uh, I'll just turn this up a little bit. Shut up, shut up. Shut the hell up. Keep it down, it's the middle of the night. I've had enough. I'm calling the cops. In your mommy's arms, you're sleeping. And soon dawn will come creeping with her. Lula, 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 lula. The Apocalypse Players present The Afflicted from Reckoning of the Dead by Noah Lloyd and Matt Ryan, with Dominic Allen as Detective Rusty Steele, Dannon McAleer as Detective John Caramel, Joseph Chance as Detective Lorenzo Ferrari, and Dan Wheeler as your Keeper of Arcane Law. Part One, The Big Heat. You're listening to WDAP New York. That was Huckamere with Lula Bye Bye. Just can't get enough of that track. It is 8.31 in the a.m. on Monday, 29th of August, 1947, and it is shaping up to be another scorcher in New York City. No need for a weather bulletin this morning. The heat wave looks set to continue. So keep out of the sun, remember to hydrate, and stay cool by listening to WDAP New York. This next one goes out to the boys of the 13th Precinct, the busiest cops in the Big Apple. Detectives Rusty Steele and John Carmel. Partners, of course. I think we meet you as you bump into each other on your arrival at work this morning at the precinct. Uh, Well, I'm probably on the station yard smoking a big big chunky number (laughs) yeah I think I uh, I left my apartment in uh, it's not quite uh, Queens but it's on the outskirts of it and I probably took the L towards the the precinct station and uh, you know there's a girl lying in bed waiting for me but uh, she better be out by the time I get back that's all I'll say and I stride up in my uh my fedora, a little cigarillo on the side. Quite a clean-cut looking fellow, he's very handsome. He turns heads. He walks into your rhinal and heads turn. You know? <laughs> uh, I'd probably see you 
coming towards me. I'm a, I'm quite a big guy, but it's like I used to be like a quarterback build, but I've run, I've run to seed, um, really quite in a. So I'm really heavy, thick set, always coughing and wheezing, and uh, uh, yeah, big, 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 thick uh, mustache. Uh, salt and pepper hair, um, squinty little eyes, always, always flushed, big flushed cheeks, um, and uh, I've got my sleeves rolled up. I'm a, like an old, I'm like a Nick, I look like Nick Offerman. <laughs> <laughs> you, I mean, you do look like Nick Offerman. I mean, you sort of do, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a Nick Offerman who's done less whittling is what I look like right now. A less practical Nick Offerman. And I see you coming, I'm still on the steps. I see you come in and I, uh, I've got this sort of perpetually pissed off slash hunted look uh, that um, it's probably, you know, I saw action in World War One, I, I guess, did I? What, how old am I? 55? Oh, maybe not. Um, what, we in 47? Yeah. Oh, maybe. Yeah. So yeah. Maybe, uh, would I? Would I? 55? I don't know. I can't do the maths. So you're 55 and 47, so you would have been born in uh, 1892. So 14 plus 8, you would have been 22 at the beginning of the First World War, I think. I think. Oh, great. Then yes. You better have seen action. Either way, I've got this perpetually pissed off look, but I'm not, you know, I'm just a very reserved, old-fashioned kind of detective. Hey, Rusty, how was your weekend? Uh, same old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, same here. You want to cut it with that? You want one of these? They're better for you. It's kept me alive so far. <laughs> yeah. That's clear. That's clear enough. You want to hand up the stairs, old man? Ah, yeah, go fuck yourself. <laughs> I dodged the little cuff he probably tries to give me. <laughs> That's, uh, it's as hard as a, it's as, it's as hard as a, it's as hard as a. F- <laughs> <laughs> I've only could think of something. It's as hard as a fishwife's kitchen today. Jeez, Christ. You ain't wrong. Uh, and, um, as you walk up the, walk up the steps to the precinct, just before you reach the door, the door swings open and a young woman from the typing pool comes out. She sees, she sees you, um, Detective Carmel, and she sort of immediately kind of blushes and goes, "Oh, Detective Carmel," and sort of smiles at you. Do I know her name? Yeah, you do. She's called Cindy. Hey, Cindy, how are you doing? Oh, I'm real swell, thanks. Real swell. You checking off already? Half assing it? Oh no, just uh, running an errand for the boss. Ah, uh, yeah, gotcha. Uh, uh, oh, uh, anything we should know about? Oh no, nothing much. Quiet morning. Oh, good morning, Detective Seal. Oh boy, it's as uh, hot as a. <laughs> hot. <laughs> Ain't it just? Hot as something. God, if only any of us could think of something that was appropriate. Yeah. Oh, it's just. Whew, it's as hot as a. Hot as an elephant's armpit. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> I bet, I bet. And uh, she sort of uh, heads off down the steps and t- turns turns back to you one more time detective carmel and sort of like smiles and like flicks her hair and kind of and then she turns back she kind of trips on a loose stone on the cobbles and hey, yeah. and, and and hurries off down the road careful there cindy see you again and she uh and she a doll ash uh, women are all the same oh yeah 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 let him take the lead they'll walk your miles i was in love once i don't like to talk about it no, I'm sure you don't. You like to talk about not liking to talk about it, though. I've noticed that a few times. Damn straight. <laughs> You'll never catch me talking about it. Not to nobody. My own private business. And that's the way it's going to stay, see? I believe you. I believe you. And um, as you wander in, you hear... There's a bit of, you know, bustling, and you hear some... You hear from down the corridor in the chief's office, you hear, Right, if I have to tell you one more time, you better, yeah, you better get back in your yeah, I got... And just can't really make out any words, but he's just, shout- it's normal, really, to hear him shouting at his subordinates. And then you see the door, like, 
swing open and um, a young detective sort of uh, hurries out looking kind of uh, o- overawed and, and um, anxious and sort of hurries hurries off down the road to another off down the uh, corridor to another office I think I, I see this uh, <laughs> I, I see this younger officer run out and I sort of turn still briefly and sort of don't roll my eyes but I just sort of widen my gaze slightly in a there we go again um, so yeah uh, well after you I hate Mondays yeah me too me too not as bad as Tuesdays, though. Don't get me started on Tuesdays. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesdays can go straight to hell. And as you approach the door of the, the chief's office, you see him behind his desk. He's um, he's perhaps not the sort of stereotypical police chief. Uh, he's a little pit bull of a man, like a ball of energy. Um, in another life, he might have been um, a mobster. I think he's uh, uh, Irish Italian, uh, maybe played by Joe Pesci in the movie, um, in a ginger wig. He works you hard, uh, but he's a good guy. You're not equals, but you've got a good working relationship with him. And he says, Oh, steel! Carmel, get in here, get in here now. All right, Chief. Oh, thank God you're here. Oh, steel, you got one of those um, fat cigars? I. I slump down in the in the seat opposite the desk, put my feet up on the desk, and th- and just throw one to him, <laughs> and like my own, <laughs> he shoots his hand up and catches it. <laughs> oh, it's been a hell of a weekend. I could use one of these. Whoa, boy, it's what is it? Nine o'clock. It's already hot as a welder's crotch out there. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. How long you did it? Would take you all weekend that one, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's plenty more where that came from. <laughs> How you doing, boys? Yeah, not so bad, not so bad. What do you got for us? Oh, well, slow morning. I got a noise complaint, uh, if you can believe it. <laughs> I know, I know. Don't give me that look. I know I'd rather be giving you... Leave it and wait till it's murder. Then I'll be interested. Hey, this has been kicking off all weekend. If you don't deal with it quick, it might turn into murder. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Whereabouts? So, uh, yes, uh, it's a noise complaint. Uh, a tenement down on uh, my New York geography is not good enough, so I'm just going to make it up. Low East Side? It's usually East Side. Down on, yeah, and, um, 25th and uh, 25th and Royal. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Suddenly I'm not surprised. Ah, uh, Hell's Kitchen and the Bronx and <laughs> uh, Staten Island. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's right. Yeah, we're from New York. <laughs> <laughs> New York detectives. That's right. Freezing 16. Oh, oh this coffee is fantastic. Hey, what is it, Tutty Toit Street, you said? Don't eat all those donuts. I need some to go in my hot dog. <laughs> I'm walking here. Hey, are you, are you, are you making fun of me again? My, my classic New York accent? <laughs> No, no, not at all. Brooklynese is very in at the moment. Yeah. Exactly, that's what I always say. So, uh, it's uh, it's a it's a guy called Clark Price who's um, he's apparently he's been bang- making something in there in his apartment there. And what's he building in there? The neighbors are all complaining. There's a few of them filed complaints over the weekend, and uh, the heat riles everyone up. Yeah, people get crazy. That's what I said, Steel. That's what I said. So. Anyway, I hate to give you a pedestrian type case like this, but if you want to head down there, it's um, yeah. I could really use with this. Just you know, it's quiet at the moment. You just wind this up. Yeah, yeah. Get back here as quick as you can. You know what it's like. Yeah. Someone else can come in. All good. All good. We'll have it done within the hour. Oh, I certainly hope so. Good excuse to grab some coffee. Hey, uh, St- Steel, you got another one of those cigars I keep for later? Yeah, hey, take two of them. I got a whole trunk load. <laughs> It <laughs> catches them both. Right. Uh, well, any questions? Or are you ready to head straight out? No, no. I mean, I... I mean, have a coffee before you go, obviously, you know, and pick up a couple of donuts. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking the same. Uh, yeah, only thing is, this price hey, guy... did you see Cindy this morning? Oh, yeah. Did you see Cindy this morning? I did. She's looking swell, ain't she? <laughs> you're not wrong, you're not wrong. Yeah. What's the secret, I wonder? 
Oh, uh, yeah, the elixir of life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Aquavita. You know, she's she's 48? You're joking. Yeah, I am joking. She's 28. Yeah, I was going to say, fucking hell. She's going to wind up an old maid, though. Carmel, you want to make your move quick? <laughs> hey, hey, yeah. Uh... I ain't going to be tied down no time soon, Chief. Thanks for the concern. Anyway, get out of here. You're wasting my time. Yeah. Hey, one last thing. My wife loves you. But is uh, this Price fella, don't suppose we got anything on him? Just a regular Joe? Uh, he's, um, yeah, I, know, I, 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 I don't know any more than you do. Okay. You know, best go down there and work it all out. It, Not a known troublemaker. Yeah, okay. No, no, no record, nothing as far as we know. Great. All right, should be quick. Wait a minute. These people, you say every, more than one person complained about his noise, right? Well, it's one of these tenement buildings. It's pretty crowded. You know how these people live. So, but you only had one complaint. Or you had multiple complaints. Multiple complaints. All right, all right. That's all I need to know. All over the weekend, they all come in, you know, and we said, well, we'll wait till Monday. Yeah, yeah. All right, Caramel. Let's get down there and crack some skulls. Yeah. Sounds about right, Steel. All right, boys, get out of here. And uh, he, yeah, sort of screws up a, a ball of paper and sort of throws it at one of your heads. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> can I do a dex test to see if I can header it out of the air into the bin? Absolutely you can, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah, that's a hard success. Nice. Excellent. Um. I'm going to give you a little boost to your luck score for that. Oh, true. It is. <laughs> I could do with it, to be fair. Yeah. Well, well, you, yeah, because exactly, your luck is so bad. Roll me a d10 and add it to your luck. Mm. Oh, seven. Lovely. Nice. Thank you. That's the last nice thing I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> so he gives you the address of this... Uh, this apartment building, it's in a part of the city that it's not. It's not the worst part of the city, but it's um, it's there's you know qu been like quite high immigration. It's the sort of like you know tenement building that is quite crowded. A lot of different sorts of people all living together. It's, uh, you know, big immigrant families, and then you know, in, you know, people down on their luck. Yeah, sort of you know, artist types, all sorts really. Can be a bit of a tinderbox, of course. So I uh, yeah, it's that kind of place, but but not. But it's I get why that many complaints would draw us down there. You know? Yeah, but it's not somewhere where it's not like rife with um, like mob violence or anything. It's uh, it's an ordinary neighbourhood, really. Anyway, he gives you the address. Um, you 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 know where it is. So you can head straight down there, or yeah, I reckon. Well, pick up coffee on the way, right? Of course. Yeah, you want to drive or shall I? I don't know if I have a drive. I'll drive. Great. I, uh, yeah, hop in the passenger seat. We maybe stop at a little uh, drive through sort of diner bits back then. Probably not. I'll just pick up a couple of coffees and a box of donuts. Sure. And then on the way, you um, you get caught up in a little bit of the tail end of rush hour traffic. Yeah. God damn it. And, um, and I think maybe, Rusty, you, you it's not really your... You wouldn't normally do this, but you start telling Caramel about the dream you had last night. Because it was a bit odd. I didn't sleep too well last night, John. Oh, you're kidding. How come? I think it's this heat. Yeah. I had this... I had this real strange dream. There was a man, he was like a... He was like a... Like a little man, you know? Like half my height, but he was old, and he was playing a uh, he was playing a, a squeeze box, like one of those harmoniums. Yeah, yeah. And he was singing a song in Spanish. So strange. Sounds like a a leprechaun or something. Oh, Spanish, right, right. It was like that, yeah. But he looked like he was uh, I don't know. Uh, he, he looked like just some small old man. And then, uh, but too small. Too small for the harmonium, really. Anyway, he starts singing this song in Spanish, but I understood what it was about, even though I don't speak a word of the stuff. It was all about how, uh, 
how I'm going to have to make a choice, a big choice in my life. And uh, it's going to make a it's going to make a big difference. Anyway, I look around. I'm in this. It turns out I'm in this theater and uh, I'm smoking. And there's a lot of smoke in the air. Can't really see. And I turn around over my shoulder and there's my. Uh, uh, well, my my son is there. Uh, I mean, he's he's, you know, I ain't seen him ever, really. Oh. Uh, I just know there's a kid out there that's mine. And, uh, you know, because we all made mistakes, right? Yeah, you're not wrong. But I knew it was him, even though I don't even know what he looks like. Well, I guess he looked like his mother. I tried to find him once. Oh, you did? But, uh... You talked to him? No, never. No, I mean in the dream. Oh, in a dream? No. What do you make of that? Well, uh, I ain't no, uh, head shrink. I ain't no, uh, I don't know. I guess dreams is dreams. If we took too much from him, I mean, some of mine are crazy. Just, you know, colors and shapes, really. Yeah, this one felt different. Also, I feel like that little man with the harmonium. I feel like I've seen him. I know they say... Everyone in your dream is someone you've seen, but I feel like I've seen him seen him. Huh. Like, like he's seen me. All right, I get you. If I ever see that little guy again, <laughs> if I ever see him while I'm awake, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to wring his neck. Yeah. He was <laughs> super creepy. Break his fingers at least, stop him playing that damn harmonium. He was, cre- he was creepy, and yeah. one of the creepiest things ab- ab- about him... There was a lot of blue velvet on the walls. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. I think, it'll dance. <laughs> I, think I know that club. <laughs> One of the weirdest things, and, and you find yourself, you're, saying, you're telling your partner, you tell him everything, really. You know, although not, you're not in a, like a you know, touchy-feely, sherry kind of guy. Of course, it's the 40s, but you, he knows you better than anyone. Mm. Yeah. But why didn't you tell him? You, you're saying that, you're like, why, didn't, why did I say that? Why did I say that he was singing in Spanish? Mm. Because he wasn't singing in Spanish. He was singing in some language you'd never heard before. Mm. It was guttural and um, very, very foreign. It sounded, maybe there was something sort of Middle Eastern about it, but it was, it was like no language you'd ever heard before. But, but you think this to yourself and you're like, I don't want to share that information. I don't know why, but it makes you feel deeply uncomfortable. Mm. Anyway, the traffic clears and you um, you you roll on towards the apartment building. And I think you pull up outside outside the apartment building. How 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 big is it? Oh, now you're asking. Uh, so let's see, forties. What would be reasonable? Ten ten floors or something. Yeah, is that even if that might be quite a lot? I'm going to say eight stories, and it sort of dominates the the corner of the uh, the block. It's the kind of thing that would have been uh, um, the the era is wrong, but it's it's like quite brutalist, a uh, functional sort of concrete apartment building, like a brownstone tenement. Uh, yeah, yeah. We got this guy's apartment number, right? You do. It is 516. 516. Sounds like stairs. Huh. Like, gobble down another half a donut. <laughs> oh, you want me to go up, or... Uh... Well, we should both go. You never know, he might be a kook. Yeah, yeah, of course. I just scanned the, the street around as if to check no one was eyeballing the car. Because I know it's not that criminally infested you said but you never know when some kids are going to steal your hubcaps or something <laughs> yeah well do you want to give me a, a a spot hidden yeah yeah just to see if there's any curtains twitching or kids peering around alleyways or mm. that's probably not going to work where is my spot no definitely not 77 on the 40 looks quiet probably to me yeah it lo- lo- looks pretty quiet yeah nothing out of the ordinary i mean if i if i can do one i will yeah, sure thing. But I'm not as good as uh, not as good as uh, John Carmel. My eyes, my eyes ain't what they used to be. I got, I got this. Uh... 
You had that bifocal wing mirror put in, though, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Oh, fuck, wrong bag. Forget in the wrong bag here. Come on, what you got for me? I'm rolling here. I'm rolling here. What you got for me? What you got for daddy? Show me your ways. Luck be a lady. Too square. There we go. Put it all on black. That's a that's a fumble. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> that's a 96 on a 25, gentlemen. Wow. Wow. Shit. Yeah. What is it? Rusty. <laughs> there he is, the man with the harmonium. <laughs> well, you do see a little figure. And you think maybe it was him. I chase it. I give I give chase. Okay, great. Hey! Hey, you get back here! Hey! I'm pulling my gun. <laughs> hey, hey, Rusty, Rusty. So he's so he's at the other side of the road. Yeah. So basically you've got uh you're on one corner and you see him effectively duck round the the opposite corner of the, the block opposite. So like um you're on the right hand side. Mm. Uh, if you were to go all the way down the full length of the block, cross the road, and go down the left-hand road, he's gone round that corner. Gotcha. So you got to cross the road. Yeah, I give chase. I assume he's seen a perp. So you give chase as well? Or something that uh, that I didn't. So I slam the doors, make sure it's uh, locked, and chase after. Okay. Okay. Uh, Rusty, give me a luck roll. That's a narrow success. It's going to be one of those. Okay. Well, there's a break in the traffic. So you managed to make it straight across the road. Great. NYPD, hold it right there, you creepy little harmonium fuck. And you uh, you make it round a corner, and you see this you see this small figure running down the road. You're going to carry on giving chase? Yeah, if he's running, he's obviously a criminal. What's your movement rate? That's a good question, isn't it? Oh yeah, okay. It won't be on your character sheet, will it? No. Well, so your base movement rate is eight. Mm-hmm. And you get plus one if your size is the lowest of strength size decks. No. And minus one if it's the highest. Minus one, so that's seven. And then you also lose one movement for each full decade above 30. So I'm on five, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so so yours is five. So um, let's check yours, Dallin, as well while we're here. Yeah. So which is the biggest out of strength size and decks for you? Decks. Okay, that's fine. Um, so, and what and is, is size, what's higher, strength or size? Size is 65. Uh, size is the highest. So it's dex, then size, then strength. Yeah. Fine, so that's base. And then your, thir- your thir- in your 30s? 35, yeah. So yours is eight. Great. Yours is eight. So I, you quickly, you quickly catch up with Rusty. Yeah, close the distance. I think maybe Rusty's sort of like puffing hard. And you see this figure as the figure is getting away from Rusty. I can see them, right? Hey, who is it? What a perp! I'm running still, I'm like alongside him. It's a, the little man from the dream. What? It's him. Here, here. Yeah. Here, Rusty, Rusty, you, you're talking gibberish now. It can't be. Have I ever spoken gibberish? Have I ever, have I ever lied to you, John? No, no, you never lied to me. But in the last ten minutes, you've been a bit more. Uh, crazy than I've ever heard before. Listen, let's let's catch this guy and then let's... I mean, how far away does he look? Do I think... You reckon we can... You, you think you could catch him down? He's got little legs, yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. You're the boss. And he's carrying that harmonium. <laughs> he's carrying something. Right. He's got that harmonium. Well, you're the boss. He is running, so I just think... Well, okay. He's mixed up. He was thinking about his dream. He must have seen something worth chasing down here. So, uh... Yeah. And there's no such thing as internal investigations at this point, so I just uh, I sprint after the guy. <laughs> okay, so you you catch him and you get w- way ahead of Rusty. So Rusty, you're, you're puffing hard and you can see Carmel ahead of you, and he. Um, I'll tackle him if I can. Yeah, you lay your hands on his collar and spin him around. Yeah. And um, you're staring in the face of a, a a child holding a like a transistor radio. Right. Saying, let, let me go. Oh, Jesus, let me go, let me go. I just, I, I, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it wasn't me. I'm, I'm borrowing this. It was, I was told my, uh, a friend of mine, I did it for a, uh, I got bullied into it. I, uh, uh, just take it, take it. Hey, calm down, calm down. What's your name? What are you doing with the radio? Why'd you run? I don't know. I'm only nine. I'm just a nine year old. <laughs> uh, 
I'm not having that. And I just knock him out. No, I don't. Uh, <laughs> what an infuriating child. <laughs> but I say, uh, what do you mean? What do you mean it wasn't your idea? You listening out? I mean, I was just, I'm just a nine year old. I don't know what I'm doing. I was. <laughs> you talking through this thing? I'd be manipulated by older people. <laughs> I am. Um, I do at that point probably push his back into a wall. <gasps> not enough to hurt him, but like to scare him. Oh, God. Oh, it's the. I, uh. Who told you? Huh? To wait here with the radio. You been talking on that thing? Can you talk on that thing? N- no, I, I. So what are you waiting for? I took. I took it. I, I lifted it. I just took it out of an apartment back there. Right. So you just stole a radio? Yeah, well, I guess you might call it stealing. I don't know. I'm only nine. I'm just a nine-year-old. What do I know about the law? Right. I do call it stealing. Hey, steal. This the kid? Ah, uh, nah, that's that's a kid. That's just some kid. Yeah. Well, this is who you were chasing, right? Yeah. Yeah, I must have got... I must have not got a good look. I thought you was a little man with a... Hey, well... A harmonium. He suddenly is a, a little man with something. Here, kid, you're not necessarily in trouble, but I need you to tell me. You said someone made you do it? Were you just lying? Or did someone tell you to lift that radio? Ah, uh, uh, he looks a bit shifty, and he sort of looks left and right, and he says, um, if I... Uh, maybe if I just put the radio down and tell you where I got it from and walk away. Maybe yeah. Maybe you could just let me go? Yeah, maybe if that happens, I'll let you go. I'm not letting go of him, though. You can put the radio down and you tell me and then we'll maybe let you go. It was, um... Uh... Uh... My pa. Your pa? What's your pa's name? Uh... I, I, I don't think I want to say... Do I gotta say? You do gotta say, kid, with the law. It's not gonna get him in trouble necessarily, but if you don't let us know, we're gonna have to take you down the station, and then your dad's gonna be really angry with you, isn't he? Yeah. Um. Michael. Jordan. (laughs) Can I do a psychology roll to see if he's lying or something? Yeah, okay. I guess it'll be the base, because. I mean, I'm assuming he's lying, but, I mean, Michael Jordan doesn't exist yet, so... <laughs> Could be Michael Jordan. Yeah, if it's not on your sheet, it will be the base. Yeah. Base psychology's ten, right? Oh, it's going to be awful. Huh. I rolled an eight, so that would be a success. Uh, no, he's definitely lying. Right. So I don't let go of him. I just say, uh, listen, kid... I don't care who you're a fan of, the Mets, the Knicks, whoever. I don't know who this Michael Jordan is. That sounds like a made-up name to me. Now, you want to put the radio down on the floor? You want to tell me why you ran from us? I ran from you because you're the cops and I stole a radio. So you did know it was wrong? Of course I know it was wrong. We just ain't got no money. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, uh, listen, if you tell us, uh, tell us your dad's real name, we'll let you go. Uh, is he going to be in trouble? No. No, probably not. We just got to know. His name is, um, Michael Chance. <laughs> I believe him immediately. <laughs> All right. Because who would make up that mess sort of name, you know? Exactly, yeah. Right. All right, kid. Now, if you're going to make up a name, it would be Joseph Chance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think I think Rusty's sort of all right, kid. I sort of I still got his lapel, but I loosen it, sort of take him away from the wall, and I say, uh, "Now listen, you get on now, but don't let us catch you around here stealing again." You know, sure. There's better ways about these things. I, I know. I'm sorry. I, I'll never steal again. He says. That's fine. I think I uh, I even take out my little packet of cigarillos and I say, "You smoke?" Oh yeah. <laughs> Of course. Yeah. I'm nine. <laughs> and I, uh, I I give him one. And I say, uh, give him a little clip around the ear, but not enough to like hurt him. Just a little playful thing and say, uh, right, well, get out of here. Don't let us see you again. Why are you clipping me around the ear? I'm just a nine-year-old. I'm only nine. Yeah, okay. Hey, kid, what was your dad going to want with that transistor radio? They're just going to sell it on? Yeah, probably. All right. 
Was it any old radio or specific radio he wanted? Oh, any old radio, any... I got it. Anything sick, get, any, get anything that looks expensive. Of course. All right, kid. Well, I hope he gets more luck with the work. Get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, he says. <laughs> a bit confused about how to end the... <laughs> Jesus, as we walk back, I say, Jesus, John, you made that real awkward. <laughs> yeah, well... Sorry, I can't believe you told him your hope his dad's work picks up. Hey. You know what his dad does for a living? No, I don't. He's an actor. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I, it's Michael Chance, the actor. I really put my foot in it, huh? You certainly have. See, this is why I'm not ready to settle down with Cindy. I, I can't even talk to children. Anyway, let's get back to the apartment, huh? Imagine telling an actor hope the work picks up. Yeah, I know. In 1947. So by the time you get back to the car, there's um, there's a man waiting by the car. You you, uh, you hear about price? You hear about the noise? Who's asking? Oh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm I'm Lawrence Lawrence Davidson. Um, you you I, I I filed a complaint. Yeah. You hear about the noise? Yeah, we hear about the noise complaints. Don't worry. Oh, come on! You got it. You you got to deal with it. We've been putting up with this all weekend, and it's not the first time. You know, it's not the first time. How often does this happen? Well, he's, uh... <clears throat> he's, um... He's a noisy bastard, if you excuse my French. He, uh... It, it happens sort of every now and again, but it's never been this bad before. Never been this bad. And is it all the time, or just at night, or what? Oh, well, this weekend, I, 24 hours a day. All night, all day, I don't know. I don't know why the guy doesn't seem to sleep. What sort of noises? And how would you describe the noise, yeah? Yeah. What he said. Oh, it's like um, banging and hammering and scraping and like he's building something in there. I don't know. What's he building in there? What's he building in there? What's he building in there? I don't know. Well, you know he's a workman or what? what's his job? Oh, I, I, I don't know. I, I thought he was some... Um, I thought he was some kind of artist or something. I. Uh, well, maybe he's doing a sculpture or... Yeah, maybe, but you know, I, you never know. Either way, it's keeping you folks up. Do, do I do I look like a do I look like a, a rare art dealer or some kind of sculpture connoisseur? I, you know, we we got to sleep. We all got to sleep. I get you. I get you. Well, we'll go up and have a work. Uh, what what floor did my wife works nights? I you know, and I work days. So like, all right, pal, we don't need your life story. Well, you gonna help us out or what? You gonna stand? I mean, where have you been? We're here, ain't we? Eventually, I filed a complaint on Saturday nights, Monday morning. Oh, oh. Do you know which city you're living in? <laughs> this is New York City. Are you, I'm amazed that they've sent two detectives down to deal with a noise complaint. <laughs> you know how many murders there are in New York City? Well, it's only going to get worse. <laughs> it is if you keep talking to us. <laughs> it's going to get even worse if this banging continues. Is that a threat? No. Are you threatening to kill this fella, Price? So you're planning to kill this man? <laughs> no, no, it's more of a, a, a turn of speech, like a metaphor. Right. I don't go in for turns of speeches. Hmm. Okay. Well, listen, we're here now. And I don't care about metaphors or nothing else. That's why you ended up in the police force, I guess. What metaphor are we talking about here? He's on uh, Metal Floor 5. <laughs> <laughs> Metal Floor 5. Excellent. <laughs> right. Well... I guess you can get back to loitering on the pavement or whatever it is that's been keeping you up. Officer, I am a primary school teacher. I see. What time of day is it? Oh, it's half past nine, but it's an inset day. <laughs> right, okay. Just checking. <laughs> Term doesn't start till Thursday. Yeah. Okay. We're doing our lesson plan, setting up the rooms with the pictures on the walls, doing some collage. All right. All right, sir. All right. We'll head up now, Okay. Mm. We'll sort this thing out. As we walk to the door, I say, Gee whiz, if all of the tenants here are that uptight, no wonder they're making noise complaints. I know. He's probably just whistling on the john. I'm on the side of the artist already. <laughs> yeah. This guy seems like a fucking pedo. <laughs> I, I hate this fucking place. <laughs> <laughs> fucking job's worth this every... All right, let's shoot first, ask questions later. <laughs> <laughs> I kick the door down. <laughs> no, don't. Everybody on the floor. Nobody move. This is the NYPD. <laughs> well, you kick the door open. There's no one there. It's not the sort of apartment building that has a concierge. 
cut that. Cut that. It sounds it sounds like I'm advocating police violence. Cut it. Cut all of that. <laughs> yeah. I'm not cutting any of it. <laughs> Fifth floor, did he say? Yeah. Or did I imagine that? Yeah, yeah. Five, five, one, six, right? So you make your way up the stairs? Yeah. I'm always like three steps behind. <sighs> oh, jeez. So I have to remember, the, gr- the ground floor is the first floor. Yes, of course, yeah. Um, because it's America and they do everything wrong. And you hit the second floor. By the time you hit the third floor, you can hear this noise. Oh, right. It's, it's not, these people aren't being precious or oversensitive. There is like, it's just banging and hammering and you, and there seems to be, there's like some music playing as well, but like over the music, you can hear this, uh, it's almost like a blacksmith's workshop. It's um, really cacophonous. It's unfortunately very easy to imagine. <laughs> you fuckers! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Here, you hear that, Steel? I sure do. Like a... It's like a work site. Yeah. It's like a steel mill. Uh, I guess maybe they weren't exaggerating after all. What the hell's going on? Let's get up there and see if he's not got some dangerous machinery running in a an apartment block. Yeah. Maybe he's armed, too. Yeah, yeah. Could be building a bomb. Yeah, probably is. Yeah. So you, you're on the third floor. Are you going to carry on up a bit more? Yeah, unless there's anything... The fact that we've stopped on the third floor, is that random, or is it worth doing a spot hidden, maybe? Uh, no, it, it... There's... Yeah. Nothing... No, there's nothing to see, really. I pass Rusty back another donut and say, uh, here, for the energy. There's another two flights... <laughs> so you go up another story and uh, but, and then you get to the fourth floor and there's a couple of doors sort of this occasion there's a door will open and someone will stick their head out and like look up yeah yeah you know a tut and it's getting increasingly increasingly loud yeah um, and you are uh, you're, you're now I think fully aware that this would be like deeply problematic trying to live here with this going on full time yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if we, if we catch like luck eyes with anyone opening the doors, I might just say, "Stay inside, stay inside." He may be building a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> a bomb? <laughs> no, he's joking. He's joking. Did he say they may be building a bomb? Oh, for fuck's sake, still. <laughs> it's my dry sense of humor. <laughs> I think they said. I think they said he was building a bomb. Well, <laughs> and there's a few and there's a few people rushing. <laughs> <laughs> a family suddenly run out like with suitcases and run down the stairs. They were ready to go already. <laughs> Good luck. It'll be fine. We're sorting it. God damn it, Rusty. A bomb this big will take out the whole block. <sighs> they said a bomb this big will take out the whole block. What's gotten into you, Rusty? <laughs> There's a few more doors open. <laughs> a few more people start running out. Uh, this is... well, I guess at least we've cleared the area. Yeah, well, if it is a bomb, you'll be thanking me, won't you? Well, yeah. From the floor below, you hear someone yell, They said it's a bomb! (laughs) (laughs) Right, well, we better get up there quick, just in case it fucking is. You make your way up to the fifth floor. You can see room 516. The, the, The stairs sort of come out, kind of, kind of in the middle of the building. So it looks like you've got sort of, um... Five, five, ten, and down in one direction, and five, eleven, and up in the other direction. So you can see that five, sixteen will be just down the corridor, basically. Well, I'm gonna walk right up to it and give it a a real hard knock. No answer. I knock again, and this time I go NYPD. The banging stops, but there's no answer. Oh, so the noise has stopped completely. When Detective Steele yelled NYPD, yeah, the, the banging stopped. The music's still playing. Here, here, Rusty. And I sort of duck my back against the side of the wall by the door because that's not a good sign, something's stopping when they hear police, you know. Hey, back up, back up. Don't want to get shot through the door, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I do the same thing on the other side of the door. Here. Here, open up. No answer. We know you're in there. Um, our knowledge of this building, were there any, are there any, like, outdoor fire escapes that went down the outside of the building? Um, 
Hmm. Let's see. There probably would be, wouldn't there, in this era? Well, there... I'm just wondering whether you would have seen it. I think you had a good look at the building, so I'm just going to say without a roll that, yes, you saw there was that there was a fire escape went down the outside. Okay. Is there a keyhole in the door? Uh, yeah. Hey, Caramel. Yeah? Have a look through the keyhole. See what you see. I put my fucking eye to that. My eyes ain't so good. Okay, fuck. <laughs> All right. I, uh, I do. I kneel down and I just very briefly sort of cut my eye to the keyhole to see if I see a guy pointing at levelling a gun at the door or anything. <laughs> Give me a spot hidden. Okay. Hey, it pays to be uh, cautious. Uh, that's a fail. <laughs> you can't see much. You can sort of just see like, you can see some like dark shapes in the room, but you're not sure whether it's like furniture or sculptures or, or what. Yeah. Okay. I can't see anything. Here. Is there a... There's an adjoining... Like, there's an adjoining apartment, I imagine. There's apartments on both sides. Yeah. It's, um, it's quite... You know, it's quite... Uh, the, the apartments look like they must, they must be quite small. Yeah. Barely bigger than big hotel rooms, to be honest. Yeah. Because the doors are not too far apart. Yeah. I think I might gesture to uh, Rusty, sort of, to keep eyes on this door. Or maybe to keep knocking, and I, I, I slide back to the nearest door and give that a rap to the neighbouring flat. Cool, so you knock on um, 414? Yeah. And you hear a woman's voice saying, um, Who is it? Hi, uh, madam, it's uh, Detective here, Detective uh, John Carmel. But you're investigating the, uh, oh. the noise complaints we've had. Oh, at last! Yeah, and she and you hear footsteps come towards the door, and she puts a chain on the door and opens the door, and she's uh, you know quite an elderly woman. How are you, ma'am? Well, did you, you made him stop? Well, sounds like you made him stop. Yeah, I'm just slightly concerned he might have gone down the. That uh, he might start again. Me too. Well, that he might have gone down the fire escape and might be trying to. I was wondering if I might be able to take a peek through your window and see if he's trying to escape down the older. Uh... Do you? Can I see your badge? Yeah, of course, of course. You know, you can never be too careful. I show her the badge. Oh, hmm. All right. Thank you. And you're you're a nice looking young man. Oh, jeez. Well, hmm. And you're a nice looking woman. Oh, oh, you're too kind. But I. I... Uh, time is of the essence, if you get my drift. No, of course. I, I've been baking cookies as well. And she closes the door and uh, undoes the chain and then opens the door and says, come in, come in. As soon as it's open, I shoulder it into her and I run... No, I don't. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> but I do. I want to I move quite swiftly through the house and open a window and see if I can see anyone on there. Oh, can I get you a cup of coffee? Yeah, yeah, that'd be great, actually. Me and my partner would really love that. Oh, I'll just, I just put it on. And she goes into the little kitchenette and starts put, making coffee. And you're going to the... I want to go straight to a window on that side so I can sort of see out and see if there's anyone trying to get away down there. Sure, yeah. She's got, like, um, uh, sort of neck curtains and then, like, a sash window. So you pull the curtains apart and you can you can see that there, there's, like, a fire escape that comes across yeah. under all the windows. So you're great in exactly the right place. You know, each uh, apartment really just has one window on that side and... Um, so you can't see anything without opening the window, except for the fact that there is a fire escape out there. I want to open the window then. Okay, fine. Um, it has a little uh, a little key which you unlock and you pull it up. And stick your head out. Yeah, I mean, as in like similar to the door lock. I kind of want to <laughs> like a little jack in the box. <laughs> yeah. There's there's no there's no one out there, but you can see that the fire escape does go past the window next door as well and then down there's one of those you know all great like metal in which case i leave the window and i say uh yeah yeah black would be great black with sugar if you have it oh yeah i'll just tell my partner you're making us a cup sure. and we'll get this guy to keep quiet don't you worry oh that's the important thing you know yeah i haven't been sleep i do you know what i haven't been sleeping the same since my husband died oh that's so sad i say as i'm Walking to the door. Fifteen years ago, and and um and my dreams have been very strange lately. Is that right? Hey, Rusty. Yeah, that is right. Oh wow! Oh. I'm in the no doorway. No one ever so. interested in my dreams. No, no. I, I hey, tell me about your dreams. I'm just letting my partner know where I am. When you oh. when you look into the corridor, I'm stood facing the door, clearly about to kick it down. Rusty, Rusty, yeah. we can get in through the fire escape. It goes along. You go through. 
Well, you go through the fire escape and I'll go in the old fashioned way. Okay. Uh, uh, madam, um, I'm, I'm so interested in your. <laughs> yeah! Dreams. But as you've just heard, we might be about, about to make an arrest. So, and I dash back through to the window and climb out onto the fire escape. <laughs> Was that <laughs> you kicking the door down? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so I think if you want to kick the door down, you better give me a strength roll. Fantastic. Come on. And, hmm, let me think. Yeah. Kicking a locked door down. Yeah. I think it might need to be a hard success on a strength roll. Well, you're in luck. It's nearly an extreme success. Oh, great. Okay, the door flies off its... Um, door. Are you trying to kick it off the hinges, or are you trying to just, like, kick, kick up the it, lock it, side? Kick it open, yeah. I kick, I kick the lock. Okay, yeah. But I kick it fucking hard. Yeah, so you do. So it it sort of splinters the door frame, splinters around the, the the lock, and it you know smashes in. It looks like it maybe had a bar lock as well as a little Yale lock, but they're this both gone. Is Brooklyn. And and as you kick the door, you see um a figure. He looks like he was just like throwing something over something, like a sheet. Oh. But he sees you and goes <gasps> and and just runs for the window. Um, and opens the window and dives out of it. Meanwhile, Carmel, where have you got to? Well, when I heard the the door going, I just w- went for the window to get out onto that fire escape. Okay, why don't you give me a dex roll to see how quick yeah, you got yeah. there? It's my best score skill, so it better be good. That's a, f- a 56 on an 85, so it's a good success. It's not hard. Okay, great. Um, so... Uh, what's your what's so your dex is 85 is it 85 yeah uh, what's your dex Rusty 50 50 so you make it to the window yeah and you you're out the window and basically at the same time as this uh, as this sort of mm, lanky figure mm. climbs out the window next to you yeah. You kind of got the jump on him because he wasn't expecting to see you there. Yeah. And he goes, oh, God. And um, and, and like kind of looks behind him as if he's going to try and, um, uh, like, run back the other way. Yeah. There's sort of ladders and on both ends of the building, basically. I mean, if I have a moment at that point, obviously my initial reaction is to pull out my firearm and say, stop, right there. I'm not going to try and shoot him. I mean, I'm hoping he'll... He sees you pull out the firearm and he sort of vaults over the um over the Fucking over the hell. runway. Christ. Uh, and and kind of he's sort of like dangling from from the from the from the so walkway. Over a drop to the ground, basically. Like, I guess he might be able to try yeah, and swing I in, mean, but he's whole he's dropping. There's another there's another walkway just a story down, but yeah, he's sort of dangling. <sighs> Fucking hell. Um, Could easily go wrong. Yeah, it could easily go wrong. Um, Rusty, uh, what what do you do at this point? You've just barged into the room. Um, shall I tell you what you can see? Yeah. So there are um, several objects in the room that are all covered with um, like uh, tar- tarpaulins or sheets, um, and they're slightly odd shapes. And uh, the main thing, though, is the smell of the room uh, is like a it's like a punch in the gut. It is completely vile. So I would like a constitution roll. Uh, oh, I, I don't have very good lungs. Mine's not great. Either. <laughs> Uh, that's a fail. That's a 47 on my 30 constitution. Well, so unless you want to push it or spend some luck, you you immediately want to leave the room. You have this, you know, sort of desperation to get out of there. How far away is the window? Can I see the window from where I am? You can see it, but uh, the smell appears to be coming from these objects and they are between you and the window. You're right by the door, so you you feel this visceral need to get back out the door where you came from. I'd like to push the roll, okay, by running to the window. 
Okay, fine. Um, so uh, sprinting to the window because I'm thinking if I can get the window open, it might not be so bad. Yeah. So would you? Uh, Windows so, open. Well, that's, that's interesting. So given given that it's a push, are you going to use the same skill, or do you want to use something else? Oh yeah. Oh, that's a good idea, isn't it? Smart. So I mean, if you were going to use, you're going to push it with Constitution. I guess you might be, I don't know, holding your breath until you get to the window or something. But but if, if you could maybe, um... well, it could be Dex if I'm sprinting. I, I actually my the best my if I was really trying to do a Joseph Chance on this, um, I would jump to the window <laughs> like a high jump, hop, skip, and well, I think the most realistic thing. No, not at all. I think the most realistic thing is I run. So I'm going to use my Dex. Okay, great. Yeah, that's right. That, that makes sense. So, dex roll. Oh dear. That's a 94 on my 50 dex. Okay, so it's not quite not quite a um not fumble. quite a success. <laughs> it's not quite a success, not quite a fumble, but it is a failed push roll. It is terrible. Just can't wait for that old woman to tell me about her dreams. Probably about seeing a plane flying off to Rwanda. You run towards the window. And you're sort of holding your breath as you run. Eyes firmly fixed on it. And your foot gets caught up in something, but you just keep going. And you, you kind of pull with your foot and something you feel like you're dragging something along with your foot. Oh. And uh, you can feel like a, uh, like a weight coming, uh, but you're still heading for the window because you cannot breathe any more of this foul stench in. And you make it to the window and you sort of get dragged down by this thing attached to your foot almost like um almost like an undertow of a wave in the sea but you make it to the window and your hands are on the window ledge and you're (gasps) sort of breathing in a big deep breath almost like you've just surfaced from the sea but you can feel something wrapped around your foot and you look back (laughs) and you real that you realize that you've pulled over one of his sculptures and this is now you realise what they are. And the the top of it is sort of like right next to you because it's tumbled and come apart a bit. <laughs> and could you please... Uh, do you know what? I'm not even going to ask you to do a sanity roll. No, I am. Okay, yeah. Could you give me a sanity roll, please? What is this music? It's horrible. It's perfect. What's it called? It's on a playlist called Horror Ambience and it's called Masked Ball from an album called Flood. (laughs) That's an 83 on my 45. Mate. A big old fail. Okay, can you roll me a D6, please? This This is the music in the dream. The harmonium. The little goblin. Well, that's the thing. His lips move too fast for the singing. I think that's why this is such a violent reaction, but you need to roll me a d6 for your sanity loss, I'm afraid. (laughs) Horrible. Um, Right. (laughs) Oh, it's so horrible. That's two. (laughs) Only two. Only two. You're lucky. Well, you lose two points of sanity. What was your starting sanity? 45. Oh, well. Could be worse. Nine. You'll need nine, yeah? Seven now. That's a D6 and a slip up away. It certainly is. So, the most alarming thing is how familiar this is. It feels like this... What you're staring at, not quite in this state, but what you're staring at, you've experienced in your dreams. Because it looks like um, a long... Hmm. I'm wondering whether I should come back to you and move and go back to... Yeah. Go back to Rusty and then I'll come back to you and tell you what you what, can see, what you can see. I'm Rusty. Don't come oh, back sorry. to me. I'll, I'll go back to <laughs> Carmel and then I'll come yeah. back to you. Oh. You in this place. That's like something straight out of my family get togethers because my granddad used to have a dog called Rusty and my mum always gets everyone's names wrong, so it'd be like Finn, Julie, Rusty, Dannon. My nan used to do that. 
And yeah, my it, dad's always done it as well. I got called all my siblings. I get used to get called like Jillian quite a lot. Yeah, and the it dog. with the siblings. <laughs> it started with the siblings, and then and then dogs started getting involved, and that was like, oh, yeah. well, that's weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so yes. let's. So I'll tell you what you, exactly what you're staring. I'm going to leave you staring at it, oh. thinking this is familiar. The cruelty and this and it stinks. But what is it anyway? Uh, detective, detective caramel, caramel. Yeah. Um, what, what do you do? You can see this figure hanging over, hang, dangling. Uh, it'd hand. probably be a Dex thing, but I don't want this guy to. As soon as he burst out and he looks fearful, and I know how how strong willed Rusty can be and how he always likes to go in hard. You know, I'm thinking this is a crazy guy. Probably he's probably a crazy guy. Um, and the last thing I want is a crazy guy splattered all over the fucking sidewalk. Um, so I think, uh, whether it's Dex or Slight of Hand, I want to, like, slip my gun back in the holster and dive and sort of try and grab one of his hands to sort of make sure he doesn't fall from the railing. OK, great. I guess I think that probably will be a manoeuvre. OK. So, um... Mm, do, um will that be a Dex roll or would that be a, would that be a fighting brawl roll? Because we are in sort of a... No, I think I'll let you have a dex roll. Okay. Because I think, like, yeah. I had the gun up, so it would be, like, in the holster and grab an arm before he has time to either fall or swing or whatever he's going to do. Sure. Okay. Um, give me a give me a dex roll, and I think maybe it'll, maybe it'll be an opposed dex roll. I'm making this up as I go along. 11. Um, see what that's an extreme success. A 17 would be an extreme success. I got an 11. Well, that's... So that's... Yeah, you, um, you managed to grab him... Like with both hands by by one wrist, wrist, wrist but yeah. like really, really firmly. Yeah. And his other hand is sort of flailing, trying yeah. to grab you. In fact, I'm gonna. He's going to. He's gonna see if he can sort of like. Um, he's he's scr- scratching at your hands to try oh, and make you God. let go. I get fucking scabies or something. Oh. Um. So, could you give me? Could you give me a brawl roll to see whether you could sort of like? Yeah resist that basically or, or uh, I mean it's it's not something you can really dodge cause, because you're in no no what's what would my brawl be base because I don't have oh. uh, uh, is it not on there no I've got um, other skills like firearms and stuff but I don't have brawl I don't think no I think the base brawl is 25 20, is that yeah. right okay I'm more a yeah a dexterous person not a brawler you're not going to believe this. I'm rolling very well. What is that? Is that zero two? Yeah, zero two. Oh, okay. Oh, well, yeah. Because he'd rolled, he'd rolled a hard, Fucking hard success, hell. perhaps. But um, was that to take damage, or was it to stop me dropping him? Or yeah, basically, he was sort of, he was kind of scratching at you. Yeah. But I think you, you, you managed to sort of like twist your arms a bit, and his, yeah. his hands sort of like just come off you. And um, at that point, he's like, "Okay, okay, okay. I just, I'll, I'll come quietly. I'll yeah. come quietly." Yeah. All right. Well, let me haul you back up, for God's sake. You're gonna die. You're hanging off this thing. And and you do. And he sort of um, puts a hand on and pulls yeah. himself back up again as well. Yeah. And you pull him back over. And. Um, We'll go back. We'll cut back to yeah. Detective Steele. Oh God! So what you're staring at is lying on its side, so you can't quite work it out first. But it looks like a like a long sort of like a spire or a minaret, but it's kind of broken and shattered as it fall as it fell. You can't tell what the what the sort of What's, ho- what's holding it together. Mm. It's clearly quite... The structure is quite strong. But you can definitely tell what's covering it, and it's the thing that's causing the smell. Dog shit. Dog something. Oh. What? <laughs> oh, no. It appears to be covered with parts of dismembered dogs. Ah! Oh. Uh, Bits of dog faces and paws. Dog faces? Eyes. 
it's um it's got it's covered in like fur and these it, these dog corpses have been dead for a while some of them are moving with maggots oh god I mean it's astonishing that you've only lost two points of sanity I'll tell you what Rusty this Milan fashion week is getting out of hand so let me get this straight this is a minaret made out of dog parts yes fuck I think and you look back across the room and you can see the you can see all the other the shapes of the other sculptures now and and you think probably they are all towers um, potentially, they're all they're all tall, pointy shapes that come up to a point, basically. Oh, so this is JD Rockefeller, <laughs> the JD Rockefeller of the dog corpse world. And I wonder whether maybe that is that maybe a good time to take a little pause if anyone would like a. Oh yeah, I've got a real appetite now. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> I think my involuntary action is me leaning out the window. And just vomiting down the side of the building. <laughs> I and going, think so. Ah! Me and the guy are probably framed in the window since that's the way he came out and jumped over the side. So you probably vomit on us. I think you're probably between the two yeah, windows. Okay. <laughs> so so you probably really... you come out one window, you hold him back and you look and you just see you just <laughs> Rusty's head come out the window. <laughs> vomit out of coffee and donuts. Oh, oh. Out. <laughs> and tobacco. Oh god. And then what, what do you say when you finish vomiting? You turn to uh, turn to Detective Carmel and say, I say, book him, Jono. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's a perv. Lula, 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 bye, bye. Do you want the stars to play with? Or the moon to run? They'll come if you don't cry Lula, 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 bye, bye In your mommy's arms you're sleeping And soon dawn will 